time now to go to your commentary team. It'll be Barry McDermott. Terry O'Connor has gone up and repositioned himself. And they're led tonight by Bill Arthur. Over to you, Bill. Thank you, Brian. Batley have gone out to Super League opponents in each of the previous seven seasons in the Cup. But occasionally they can push them all the way like they did with the Widners last season. 26-22. And uh, they've given Huddersfield a couple of scares as well. 13-4, the Giants won when they visited this ground in 2013. So John Keir's team know that a performance from the very, very highest level might, might just ruffle the Dragons' feathers, if that could possibly happen. Gareth Hewer from Cumbria is the match referee tonight ready to get the game underway conditions well when i put them to laurent frasenu yesterday he asked what the weather was like in england he wouldn't believe that the temperature was nudging the 20s and it was dry perfect he says well catalan can't have any complaints this ground a very very awkward proposition when you're playing up this hill and the wind and the rain are in your face but uh, there's hardly a breath of wind here tonight and no sign of any rain yet so catalan can't complain on that score but they will face a very very highly motivated badly bulldog side well they certainly won't sit back and just wait for catalan to play they know that they've got to take the space stop this man from running from dummy half that's when Catalan can be really dangerous. A couple of decent drives from the forwards. Gets them going, gets them on the front foot. And then they look to exploit that space. Here's Richie Myler. Myler bursting through as Sir Louis Anderson. Tap tackled. A good job as he was as well. Because he was building up a bit of steam there. But James Harrison managed to bring him down. And then Richie Myler hoists uh, a good kick on. Very well taken by Scottish international Dave Scott. Well, didn't he do well then? It was a good first set from the Catalan Dragons, relatively risk-free, free, and he had to keep his eyes on the ball at all times. They need a big start here, Batley. It goes without saying, they can't afford to give away points early, and I'm sure John Key, we were talking to him before the game, he said his players were so excited about this match, and they'll not respect their opposition, they'll not re respect reputation, and they'll just get stuck in. Here's Alex Brown. Late call into the side for, for Alex Brown because of a number of injury problems that John Keir has had to contend with. He's had to reshape things. Sean Squires unable to play because of a, a family bereavement. And that's, oh, good work from Keegan Hurst initially. Just lost his footing. Here's James Davey. And then the kick comes in from uh, Kane Southernwood. Oh, and Shigo has made a porridge of that first touch. Well, he didn't get the touch Vince Dupour has a, a word of consolation but that's exactly the sort of thing that Batley were hoping for yeah well kick for space kick on the front foot they did that because of Wayne Retty's run Alex Brown then Keegan Hurst he gets rid of a Catalan defender there was no pressure and that's an excellent kick and there's the first error of the game under pressure well, we've so, seen some errors from Tony Gigo in that full back role he's uh, taken over that role from Morgan Escaray and hasn't been faultless that scrum will bind again well it wasn't even performed properly i don't think when he's when he's confident tony zigo is one of the best john keir will be in a confident mood here here's kane southernwood now then wayne aluja he's a player that this catalan side have got to watch and aluja very nearly ghosting his way through glenn stewart who else makes the tackle here's alex brown now brown infield southernwood little skip and a step from James Brown and then he goes down Davy now Southernwood Luke Blake playing at loose forward Luke Blake but uh, better known as a hooker little change of direction and James Davy almost caught Catalan napping four tackles gone Batley pressing great early opportunity for the home side the championship side fifth in all oh, fifth in the table and Taylor well upending James Harrison and upending him illegally says the referee there's a tall player James Harrison he finds himself on the right shoulder of Dave Taylor who picks him up and slams him into the ground but I'm sure the Bulldogs will enjoy having a bit of possession <laughs> Field position is good, and they'll enjoy being at this end of the park. Well, a knock-on from Catalan, and now a penalty conceded. And another penalty conceded, they were all offside. 
Well, so, we're, we're only less than four minutes into the game, and this is exactly what Batley need. <laughs> Here they are now with James Brown. At five metres out, less than that, Catalan on their own try line, early minutes here, great opportunity, Southernwood, but the pass from Southernwood goes to ground, and Fuad Yaha will bring this ball away, and Fuad Yaha, has he got the legs of Alex Brown, the cover is coming back, but will the 19-year-old winger go all the way, he will, and that is how you turn defence into attack, the pass went astray from the Batley Bulldogs, and Fuad Yaha, after all those early problems for the Catalan Dragons, eases French nerves with his first cup try of the season. His first of the season full stop. And that's cruel for the Battley Bulldogs because they were pressing. But then it came undone for them. Well, they had all the field position, all the possession, come off the back of a couple of penalties and then it's the loose ball that goes to ground. Horro, well, he's going to ground, so who does he give it to? The 19-year-old youngster, Fuad Yaha, and he just pins his ears back. And the game can be so cruel. You're attacking at one end and all of a sudden you're asked to, to concentrate and make that transition to switch your mind to defend. But Fuad Yaha, he burst onto the scene last year. I think he's an absolute excellent player. It's a good finish as well. He's all about speed and pace. He's aware of Alex Brown in his rear view mirror, but doesn't slow down, doesn't drop a gear. He knows he has to get the ball over the stripe. And it's a good start, although they were under pressure, it's a good start, perfect response. Fuad Yaha getting his, uh, getting his chance because Jody Broughton hasn't made the trip, it was scheduled to play, but it's got a slight knock. So Yaha scores the try, Pat Richards converts it. And that is cruel on the Batley Bulldogs because they had Catalan on the back foot, a couple of penalties and the knock on, but then this happened. Just a couple of inches too far in front for Dave Scott, who has to catch that. If he catches that, he possibly has a one on one, but he retains possession. He doesn't, he pulls back, the ball bounces on the floor, and there's nobody around in a Bulldog shirt to pick it up. And Lauren Fresi knew Michael Monaghan, they'll be happy with the points. Not how the game's gone so far, they'll be happy with the points. The Catalan are going to have to tidy their act up as, as far as the discipline goes. They've conceded two penalties already. Here they come up the hill. That was their choice. Taylor almost offloading that. Myler was hunting in support. Policier. Here's Jason Beterier. Everything's nice and crisp, nice and accurate from dummy half for Catalan. But Batley will. He's sticking to the task around the rook. Tony Zigo looks to get space on the edge here. It's a danger when you're the team that's got the better pedigree. It's a danger that you don't take things lightly. And I think we saw evidence of that when the first kick went up. Tony Zigo dropped it. There's a charge Good down. Pressure. But that's because Dominic Brambani had all the time in the world to get it as high as he wanted. The ball's handed over, Batley, they get possession. Well, well, Myler, brilliant Myler's pressure. kick, yeah. And that's exactly, don't just stand back and admire Richie Myler going to kick that ball. Bretherton, Harrison getting in his eye line and putting pressure on the, the Catalan half-back. So Batley take possession on the halfway line. And here is Keegan Hurst, their captain. Brian said, bit of speculation about where he might be playing his rugby league next season. Southernwoods, across the field they come. Lugia, back in the side. The uh, he's on a season-long loan from Bradford. In actual fact, Chris Lugia, and a lot of Super League clubs. One or two, keeping an eye on him. And just up the road, Leeds have taken the lead against the Huddersfield Giants in another cup tie. Remy Casti, I think, is uh, on his haunches in back play for the Catalan Dragons as that kick is hoisted. Nobody wants it. I think it's headed backwards. Still on the last. Can Bradley profit from this? That'll be the turnover. They couldn't capitalise on that. Brambani it came to. Sorry, Bill. Butler needed some quick thinkers then. When the ball landed in their hands and they had possession, they just hesitated for a fraction of a second. Nobody putting themselves in the frame to pick up the ball and Catalan having to work hard away from this bottom end again 
Casti has recovered. There he is taking the ball up for the Catalan Dragons. Vincent Dupour into the action in Dupour. Well, he spotted the gap. He's found the gap. He's got support. Tony Gigo takes the pass. Oh, it was forward. What was Vince Dupour thinking? Well, he does everything right, doesn't he? He powers through, sees that Keegan Hurst maybe have switched off just near the ruck. Well, it's the ruck speed test, isn't it? That's the reason the Batley defender steps That's away. That's a great run. The referee, Gareth Hugh, calls them offside, so the open door appears, and that's a dreadful pass, I'm sorry. You know what happens there, Bill? Because he's trying to entice and trying to pull Dave Scott into him, he double pumps the ball. And as he double pumps the ball, he doesn't get the correct pass away, which was a poor pass, and that's a try gone and begging. That was sloppy from the Catalan Dragons, and they were had potential for more points on the board as it is they trail by six points nil the Bulldogs coach John Keir is with us tonight and John you have the the Dragons under pressure they've got the breakout try other than that your guys doing you proud yeah they, they started pretty well uh, but obviously there's a, a bit of slackness there defensively because they're just playing the ball too quickly and the, the controlling us when we're carrying the ball so obviously we use a bit of deception and make sure we push with the the ball carry to try and create a quick run john obviously it's a big night what have you spoke to the players about in terms of emotion it's more about letting the occasion inspire them and doing the simple things but doing the simple things really well which is what we didn't do when they uh, they scored the first try Thanks, John. John Brambani hoists the kick. Gigo wasn't interested the last time. That one he gets a hold of. But isn't that another good kick from Brambani? He isolates Tony Gigo, kicks it directly above him, so he's the man who's got to catch it. He obviously feels that there may be a weakness there because he's made that early mistake. Well, Penalised here now, getting off the line. It was a talk about pre-game build. Take the momentum away from Catalan. Don't let them get on the front foot. Don't let them have easy carries when they're bringing it away in yardage. The Bulldogs well offside there. Gareth Hewitt pulling them up for that. And a kick that takes uh, Catalan well upfield. And into Batley territory now. There's Eloi Pellissier. Paul Ayton still out, injured. And no place for uh, Alrix de Costa in the Catalan side this evening. So... Probably Thomas Bosk will take on that hooking role. Jason Bateri now. It's Pellissier, in fact. Pellissier finds Glenn Stewart, and Stewart, who has been such a consistent performer since he's joined the Dragons this season. Pellissier, Casti, Casti ships the ball on, and Myla gets ball and tackle. He's come up with two big reads, Alex Breverton, in this set of six defensively. Little kick over the top, too strong. It was from Lucas Albert, this 17-year-old star of the Dragons under-19 side, Lucas Albert. They expect big things of him. Alex Brown running straight through Remy Casti. There is Lucas Albert. Comes from Carcassonne. Casti was furious with himself there, having been embarrassed by that Alex Brown run. And James Brown, the man who just carried the ball, the number 21, he was exceptional. That's Good run for Luke Blake. Brilliant run. And Dave Taylor with a high shot. Well, he breaks the line, doesn't he? Luke Blake, he breaks the line. I'm sure he's looking far down the field. There he is, he spins round, and then what comes in his eye line? Well, there's nothing wrong with that tackle for me. Just ricocheted off the ball, didn't it? He's banjoed him, and it's looked like a bad tackle. Do you know what? That's a fair effort as well from Luke Blake. He gets rid of Batir, he gets rid of Policia, finds himself in the clear. Well, Gareth Hewitt telling, him, telling Remy Casti to have a word with uh, Dave Taylor. I'm sure that was quite as uh, bad as the referee had judged it to be. Well, they're putting their hands up the Batley forwards. And again, where does it start? It starts at the bat with a powerful run from Alex Brown. Then it's James Brown. Then it's Luke Blake. Well, it's another opportunity for Batley from another penalty. Brown will play the ball. James Davy, Davy, Kane Southernwood, nice movement. Could be a high shot. That was well another there. high tackle. Oh, it's a forward pass, says the referee. I thought that could have I been a high shot. That was actually Stewart. a high tackle. It was the flick back inside. It's a lovely play. The shape to go open. 
come back to this blind side and there's the pass from Kane Sutherland it does drift forward and then it is a high tackle after the forward pass that's more high than the Dave Taylor one but it's obviously it's after the pass but it's not Dave Taylor so head and feed to the Catalan Dragons that's a bit of respite for them because they've had that breakout try from Fuad Yaha but uh, apart from that they've had all the field position impressive. haven't they? they've had all the field position and they're playing really really well but this is where they've got to control control the first three plays Jason Pateri plays the ball here is Dave Taylor Taylor bounces off one gets the pass away to Myler Myler who made his pro debut on this ground back in 2007 as a witness player here he is again Richie Myler was a winner that day can he be a winner in this one well tackled there here's Lucas Albert Jason Bateri gets the ball away Remy Castina bounces off one Casti looks for another one to ricochet off is brought down Pelissier scanning Lucas Albert on for Stewart Stewart little chip kick ahead oh and it's bundled out of play from Dave Scott first goal line drop out of the game yeah he couldn't take any chances could he Dave Scott Catalan going into contact offloading the ball it's causing badly some problems nice little neat kick Dave Scott and then does the ball come off Horro and the ball goes out well James Child just having a look at this yeah well it's a, it's a great kick isn't it from Stewart and Scott definitely makes a play for it but then does it touch Horro and that's what he's going to be having a look at here I don't think that's the best angle it's this one that shows who touches it last Dave Scott Leaves Batley the... Bulldogs does he push it onto the arm yeah, he's definitely the first one isn't he Barry Horro. Dave Scott who makes a play for it yeah there it is he agrees with us the video ref James Child in the truck there's a lovely little piece of play from Glenn Stewart he's been outstanding and he's renowned for his defensive work but the security gives players around him when he's got the ball in his hand I don't know, we've seen too much evidence of that in the opening 15 minutes but Batley you will assume will tire the game might open up a little bit and uh, I'm sure we'll see players like Glenn Stewart come into their own. Catalan lead by six points to nil then. Coming up to the 15 minute mark. Batley certainly giving as good as they're getting here. Not being overawed by the task facing them. And it is uh, an almighty task. Bill have been very impressed with the way that they're, they're running the ball into the tackles. They're running really hard. They're going as hard as they can kick charge down and the ball ricochets for Dave Taylor and again great example of Taylor's skill that, because that ball was could have gone anywhere and he made certain of it he's just an athlete isn't he for such a big man he's so athletic can do most things with the ball well I'm predicting something really special from Dave Taylor tonight maybe a chip maybe a, an outrageous offload but I think as this game opens up and frees up we've already seen him get one or two offloads away Keegan Hurst and James Brown, when they play in the championship, they're regularly offloading the ball. They probably need to bring an element of that into the game tonight. Well, just how big a task this is facing Batley is emphasised by the fact that the, the time, the only time they met before in a cup tie was at Mount Pleasant in 2010, and Catalan won 74 points to 12, but they won't win by that margin with errors like this well they're keeping them in the game aren't they with the penalties they're giving away with the mistakes not getting to the kick not really trying to force Batley to bring the ball away from their own line normally very disciplined when they're playing the ball Louis Anderson and Lauren Fraser new knows that well he's going to be in for a game here the Batley players know exactly how to play this pitch they know exactly what they've got to do they're up against some of the the players that they watch on Super League week in week out and they want to make a name for themselves so here's Dave Scott playing the ball the former Easter House Panther Scott Alex Brown now just inside the Catalan half James Harrison scorer of a great try in the uh, the game against Featherstone and then another error and Taylor has picked the ball up 
but just poor execution from the prop forward James Brown looking to shift the ball out the back and this is where they get penalised now looking for the, the ball out the back to Dave Scott the full back turn over field turn over the ball and you give up that field position Glenn Stewart plays the ball about 40 metres out Jason Bateri makes a, a few more metres for the Catalan side they don't need to come up with the, the flash play Catalan they just get have to get the job done here but they're not a sort of get the job done side really are they Catalan no well, they're splitting the field they've got Luke Richie Myler on one side Lucas Albert on the other nope attacking again from centre field Casti plays the ball on the last Myler kicks across field oh well claimed by Wayne Retty beautiful take not many people do that out jumping Pat Richards Pat Richards a master at that skill thinks he's got it and Wayne Retty confident catch well, his team back that out with a knock on they're under pressure now Bally oh they've done all the hard work Retty superbly claiming that kick and still Catalan have got possession they could pay a, a price for that well, you don't want to be defending your own try line when you're against this Catalan side and it's Casti getting through plenty of work early on for the Catalan Dragons and only about five meters out now the stalwart Catalan player Pelissier for Taylor Taylor took that virtually standing still Coltrane going into reverse and takes a bit of time to get back up play that ball Myler sells the dummy good defense that time to deny him James Harrison I think it was Lucas Albert that's the fifth tackle and Myler stabs a little kick in but well dealt with Brembani it was who gathered it and Batley survived tremendous defense I'm sure when we talk to John Keir he'll talk with pride how his scramble defense near their own line has got them out of trouble Retty bounces off one off two great run from the winger and here's Alex Brown from the left wing he's come in now to get involved with another speed carry has he lost the ball oh he has and again Batley doing great work in defence and then coming up with the error when they were bringing the ball away but there was a hand in there, oh, they're, claiming, there yeah. Yeah, they're claiming it's the second time that Richie Myler number seven Catalan has his hands on the ball I think they've got a case they know the Catalan players know how strong the likes of Wayne Retty and Alex Brown are, are bringing the ball away and, and John Keir well if they've lost the ball on a couple of occasions they need to make sure that they focus on those early carries don't give the opposition the ball an easy cheap ball as well you're not asking enough questions of them in attack six points apiece down the road at the John Smith Stadium where Huddersfield are playing Leeds in the cup here Catalan leading by just six points to nil so far against the fifth place side in the championship table table the Batley Bulldogs Jason Bettieri good work from him Huddersfield gone ahead by 12 points to six and Jermaine McGilvray try scorer there Myler trying to find a way through he's lost that ball that's great defense from Batley again well they're giving themselves a chance aren't they they might not have any points on the scoreboard yet but they're certainly committed and they're showing desire in their defense you can see Alex Bretherton look he's just pushing off he's not going to commit but again it's Harrison who showed up well early on he's pushing from the inside he's working extra hard putting pressure on the halfback well they enjoyed that mistake Richie Myler I think they thought he was to blame for the Alex Brown knock on strip and to, for him to make a mistake I think they enjoyed that we can go back to sideline and the Bulldogs coach John Keir doubling up as our guest uh, this evening and John some fantastic defense from your side yeah really delighted with what they showed up on our own line but uh, we put ourselves in poor positions through whether it was reefed out or, or a loose carry but we really need to be better than that we need to look after the ball and try to turn the ball over deep in their territory how, how are you gonna uh, expose this Catalan defense John well, I think we've just got to stick to what we've practiced, stick with the processes, not panic. It's an 80 minute game with plenty of time yet. John, what was the last message that you sent onto the pitch? I can't
can't remember telling it to old Terry. <laughs> You're just exactly the same as when you coached me. Well said, John. <laughs> well, he's honest, isn't he? And I'd be very proud of the, the team's efforts. They're going set for set, they're trying the best defensively near their own try line, they've been very strong. A good tackle on Fuad Yaha. Low down. Badly fans claiming there was a knock on there. Julian Bousquet has come off the bench for Laurent Frazinou. As has Greg Muniz there in possession. Lucas Albert bounces off one. And that's the fifth tackle. Batley again doing well defensively. And Myler hoists the kick. Dave Scott underneath this one. And that's another good tip. And the winger had to be brave there. Policier running full belt at Dave Scott as soon as he catches that ball. Another good carry from Alex Brown. A quick play of the ball as well. Is Wayne Retty. Catalan coming into this game off the back of that narrow defeat at Hull uh, last time out, which ended their hot streak after seven wins in a row. And that's a penalty. Retty impeded as he was trying to play that ball. Well, again, Dave Scott, Wayne Retty, Alex Brown, and the momentum that gave that big carry from Alex Rowe meant that he had retreating players, a scattered defence, and he's done well, the big front row. He's just been introduced, as has Tom Lillicrop. So the penalty has Catalan backtracking and so does Tom Lillicrop with that run but he's lost possession and, and that's what John was referring to because they're doing some good work defensively but then they're gifting possession back to their opponents. And all the hard work that you do in defence, you earn them penalties, then you make a, mista uh, a mistake on tackle one, tackle two, it just doesn't help your energy as you get towards the back end of the first half and it was a strong carry as well. But make sure you don't drop the ball. Here is uh, Julian Bousquet now. Plenty of tackles this set of six for the Catalan Dragons who are looking to extend this lead. Here's Stewart finds Gigo. Gigo sells the dummy, ducks under Luja's tackle and is then eventually brought down by Kane Suddenwood. Horro. Stewart ships it on to Myler and they're going from one side of the field to the other and they're going going with Vince Dupour and Dupour well he's threatened this evening and Dupour crosses for another Catalan try and that was slick from Catalan they attacked on the uh, their right hand side and then they shipped it across again and big Vincent Dupour gets his first cup try of the season but his sixth all told for the Catalan Dragons as they extend their lead here well, the mistake again is really costly. First tackle straight from a tap. So they get into good field position. A good shot from Glenn Stewart. And then Catalan, they shift the ball. Just look at the accuracy. They're fixing defenders. They're going at the line. They're pulling the players, the Batley players, out of the line. And when Vince DePaul has a one-on-one -on -one with Brad Barney, he's not going to pass the ball. It's just a, mit a mismatch. He's as big as most forwards and as powerful as them, Vince DePaul. He pumps the ball. Wayne Retty goes for the winger. And he goes in for the second try. He played in that 2007 Wembley Cup final, the first at the new Wembley, when Catalan lost to St Helens, Vincent Dupont. And nearly 150 Catalan Dragons appearances now for the, the big centre. And to think, he was, he was on his way out of the top flight, really. They sent him off to Toulouse for a few seasons Vincent Deport and he's got his act back together and he's come back stronger and I think stronger is the word to describe Vincent Deport but maybe his, uh, his left to right passing isn't so good as we saw earlier on in the game well maybe that's why he didn't pass it on that occasion <laughs> <laughs> Pat Richards then wide out for him but Richards who's certainly in the goal kicking groove now this Super League season improves on that Vincent Deport try and Catalan lead 12-0. Well some lovely stuff over on the right edge. Glenn Stewart heavily involved. Tony Gigo with those dancing feet and from that field position we saw the power of the big fella in the centre. Vincent Duport he just hands off the Batley defenders. Chooses not to pass it but that's the danger. If you give quality possession and field position to a side like the Dragons you're going to pay at some point. And that's, that has been the case, hasn't it? In both those tries, 
Batley have been their own worst enemy. Yeah, well, with so many opportunists that Catalan have, they've got game breakers right the way across the park. They've got speedsters on the edge. They've got forwards who can create, who run hard. They look to offload. And then they've got the likes of Richie Myler pushing up. Elwa Policier out from dummy half yet again. Whenever a hooker goes from dummy half, that's a, an indication that you're winning the rook. Glenn Stewart. Tackle just inside the Batley half. Lucas Albert. Here's Muniz now. Muniz. Not sure he was expecting that pass, but he makes a few more yards for the Dragons. And that's the fifth tackle. I think he thought about kicking at one point, but he takes right. the tackle. He looks like he was shaping to kick. Richie Myler under pressure again. They're getting those aspects of the game right. They're not giving the kickers. Well, the Catalan dra Dragons, Myler and Albert, enough time to choose where go they're going to kick. It's those needless penalties and those fumbles that are giving possession away from the Batley Bulldogs' perspective. Yeah, they're not giving Richie Myler an easy ride. That's, I think, the third time he's been, he's been pressurised. Just work really hard from the inside. Just make sure that you keep putting that pressure on them. Well, that's a good carry from Lily Croft. And in a game like this, Bill, 27 minutes gone... The excitement and the emotion of the game has just died down a little bit and you get into the nuts and bolts of the game and the grind of the game, as they call it. It's about focusing on the process, as John Keir has said. Get to your kicks, hand the ball over on our terms and let's defend strong, nice and clean. Well, Bram Barney carrying out those instructions to the letter with that kick. Yeah, we'll just kick it out off the pitch. And Batley will want to play the game as close to Catalan's line as they can and Bram Barney one of the best kickers in the championship we've saw him on Sky Sports over a number of years how good he is he goes at the line in that when he played against Featherstone a couple of weeks ago he took the line on and he was absolutely brilliant his kicking game though everyone talks about how good he is his accurate kicks where he gets them if he kicks on the front foot he can cause an awful lot of problems but they do need that space they do need that field position the first French club to play on this ground actually were Carcassonne back in 1990 when uh, they were the guests at the opening of one of the new stands and Batley beat them 44-0. don't think there's much prospect of them repeating such hospitality here but they're certainly making uh, the Catalan Dragons work for their points. Well that Carcassonne team had Daniel Dive. Patrick Conta, I played against that side when I was an Oldham player. They had some star quality players, so it was a, a very impressive win back in those days. Dupont plays the ball. Here's uh, Muniz, Stewart, and Stewart skips away from the Yelugia challenge. The job he did as well, because <laughs> he was hunting, wasn't he? Tom Bosk is on the field. Justin Horro puts the kick in, and Dave Scott, who is... He's a very impressive operator at that full-back role, Dave Scott. You need composure when you're at the back like that. He seems to have a lot of time, whether that's the fault and the flaw of the Dragons or it's the positioning of the full-back. He certainly seems to have everything under control tonight. Scotland's Player of the Year in 2015. Scotland, of course, involved in the Four Nations. Well, the main characteristic as well, you need to be brave at the back and he certainly showed up well there. He's a brave heart. So is Wayne Retty, now 28 years of age, very experienced at this level, Wayne Retty. Here's Brambani, Brambani's kick ricochets and he's given an offside there. Against his own player. Yeah, it comes off one of his one of his teammates. Accidental offside is the call from the referee. Who was it James Harrison who stood in front of him? Was it? Or George Chandler. Well, he's looking for distance. He's looking for that right-hand corner. Unfortunately, again, it's one of those mistakes, Bill, that they get to the end of the set here, but they just can't get the kick away, and they're penalised for that kick. It's Peterson. Sorry. Told you. Dave Peterson, who got uh, another one who got late call into the side because of John Pe uh, Keir's illness and the injury problems. Here's Julian Bousquet. Certainly has developed into a very solid prop. Bousquet. Anderson. Oh, nice work from Louis Anderson. Oh, shot from Alex Roth. Willie Mason on the field. 
Mason, Bosk, Myler, Munis going across the field. Greg Munis back to where that ball was played virtually. They were looking for space and they can't quite find it. So Myler kicks, kicks across the field. The ball ricochets. And that'll be the turnover. There was a, a Catalan knock on there, says Gareth Hewitt. Well, Lugia goes up in here. First of all, he can't take it. It comes off a Catalan player. So they do come ball, down with the ball. They bring in the ball away. This is where they need to be. You can talk about being disciplined when you're defending, but you've got to be disciplined when you're, you're carrying the ball as well. How strong is he, Alex Brown? It's a good formula for them. Brown, Ressi and Scott to start that momentum for the Bulldogs. Batley, half an hour gone, 40, trading by 12 points to nil. They've had their opportunities at the other end of the field. They'll get more chances as the game goes on here. Good run from Lillicrop. Well, that's two in this set he's come up with. And then Brambani hoists the kick. That one's into no man's land and Gigo has let it bounce and it's Fuad Yaha who gathers it. Well, neither one of the back two for the Catalan Dragons, Yaha or Gigo, were anywhere near that high kick. And the Bulldogs looking to apply pressure, stay clean, let the Dragons play at the six and look forward to the ball again. Bosk, here is Pat Richards now. Good form, Richards. And knows all about cup success, won it twice in his uh, Wigan days. Dupour, one of the first half try scorers. Well, there have only been two Fuad Yaha and Vince Dupour. Myler, Mason. Takes some stopping, big Willie Mason just turned 36. Mason. He's powerful, isn't he? Looking for one of the smaller men on the edge to try and run over. Myler finds a bit of space to land that kick and Alex Brown Brown bringing the ball out and John Keir once again joining us from the sidelines and John they, your guys are sticking to the task and that's that's you can't ask for more than that really no I'm, I'm really pleased with the, the effort that they're putting in I think we can be a bit smarter but the, the efforts first class and defensively I've been happy because uh, they've been a breakaway try and they've only created one other so that's pleasing but uh, we need to buy some field position one way or another and John will you be harsh on your players or will you be encouraging encouraging totally Barry uh, you've got to do that and this has helped us uh, penalty and rightly so can I say so uh, this needs to be a, a good ball set where we ask a few questions has that been where you've been frustrated in this game some of the mistakes that you've been making early it on is, in the sets John it is Terry yeah we've just given them too much cheap ball so we've got to make them earn possession and earn field position that's a, another good run from Lillicrop and that penalty giving oh, back oh. the opportunity there's another high shot could be in trouble here, Willie Mason. He's gone straight over the top of Alex Raw. Well, Alex Raw's made it nice and easy for him because he's got a really big bandage. I think it probably yeah, starts. The, fir the first contact was on the ball, wasn't it? Yeah, it probably starts. The hit's on the ball, then it goes up and it finishes up above the, the head. So I think this will just be a, a penalty. Obviously, a talking to as well. Would you yell a card in? Is it strong enough for a yellow card? Any penalties enough here, Barry. Well, initial contact was on the ball, then it goes over. Let's see what Gareth Hewer thinks. Captain! It doesn't look like he's looking in his back pocket for his cards. Well, Munis is doing the negotiating, and now uh, Gareth Hewer is saying, yeah, the, the first contact was on the ball. William Mason. I think that was about right. When you watch it full speed, and obviously from the angle we first watched it, it looked a bit worse than it was. On the way game. He's been brilliant in Lily Crook. He's been absolutely fantastic. 6 1, the penalty count in favour of the Batley Bulldogs. Now then. What a good time this would be to score, just before half-time, five minutes to go before the break. 
Here's Alistair Leak, live wire, Cumbrian coming off the bench. And they're just a couple of metres away from the whitewash in the Catalan half. Alugia now, Alugia retreats and then takes them on again. He's upended. Leak. Southernwood, Brambani shows it back inside but takes it on himself and Brambani is tackled about eight metres out. Well, good movement then, caught in two minds, Dominic Brambani. Leak. Southernwood, little grubber kick in and Gigo makes certain of that one. Well, Bartley, well, they were throwing the ball around, they were going from one side to the other. But what's been very impressive is the way that they're running into collision. So they've made life uncomfortable for Catalan Dragons on occasion have Batley, but Vince Ducour has made life uncomfortable for the Batley defenders once again. Richards just over the halfway line, that's the fifth tackle. And it's Bosk who puts the kick in, they weren't able to pressurise him. And it's a great one. Scott manages to make that one dead. And you can see why certain Sky Sports pundits are not fans of that particular tactic. No, he doesn't like that one, Phil Clark, and it's not the reward that the attacking set deserved. But I it thought was a it was a great kick, wasn't it? It was a good kick. I thought it was a good defensive set. Batley Bulldogs, from being completely honest, just lost a little bit of a sting in terms of the collision when they're defending and the line speed when it's oh. their time. That is the frustrating part of the game for John Keir. We get a penalty, brilliant first carry from the fullback Dave Scott. Yet again, then players going down, they get their arm free, and then they just think, because I've got my arm free, do I pass the ball? Well, you only really pass the ball when you're giving it to someone who's in a better position than yourself. And if you are going to give the ball and offload it to your teammate, well, make sure it's a, it's a clean catch. This is this is brilliant. This is enthusiasm. You get the ball back yourself, running between two men. And it wasn't as though he picked out two small men. He's gone in between Bousquet and Glenn Stewart. He's picked out two of the biggest men on the pitch for Catalan. Dave Scott had a, a spell at Hull Kingston Rovers who spotted his potential playing in the Scottish competition. And he's shown up well. The times we've seen Batley this season. He's been really good. And you know what, sometimes that when you're the last line of defence, you've got to make that tackle or you've got to catch that ball on the full, knowing that you're going to get belted. He's been very good. Willie Mason, Catalan, looking for some more points before the half-time Hooter sounds in a couple of minutes. And they could have him here, but Myla couldn't get the pass away. That's great defence. Kane Suddenwood, it was, making the tackle. Bousquet, bulldozing his way towards that battley line and getting the pass away. The referee said he'd called held. But then again, it was that man Suddenwood, he gets out from marker. Myler drifts away to get the pass, but can't get a good kick in. You know, there's real team spirit in this Batley side. I know that we're talking well about Batley, but these lads, they, they'll have been to work, some of these boys today, and then they come in here playing against some of the, the stars that they see week in, week out on TV, and they've got a chance to put themselves on the rugby league map, get other clubs talking about them, and there's a couple of these players that are really showing up well. And they've seen what Oldham did in the last round, knocking out a Super League side, Hull Kingston Rovers, and know that it can be done. 12-0 though, Catalan lead here. Bosk with the tackle. Into the last minute of the first 40, and Southernwood can't get the kick away, Scott does. And well is it downfield into the arms of Tony Gigo. You know, it was a good job as well that Dave Scott positioned himself behind Southernwood because again, that comes around because of the pressure from Catalan. They're not standing back now, they seem to have found the rhythm in this game and the outside backs are doing an awful lot of work here. I think some of the forwards are blowing the big ones, they're really, really struggling here. Lucas Albert, Glenn Stewart, Stewart onto Horro. Horro's pass goes behind Fuad Yaha. Horro claiming that was touched. And referee Gareth Hewer, not exactly certain, so he wants uh, another verdict on it. I don't think it did. No, they're going to have a little look if the ball comes off Alex Brown. Does he make a play for that? I don't think he did. But because his arm was in the vicinity of the ball when it was passed, 
He's gone upstairs. He just wants to make sure he gets the correct decision. One more, one more play here. Justin Horro playing in the centres for Catalan because of the season-ending in injury, season-ending injury to uh, Chris Naninu. And in fact, that will be the first half ending action and John Keir will go back to that dressing room and we will hear from him in there in a moment but John Keir and those Batley players will go back after a gallant first half effort against the second place side in Super League the Catalan Dragons who leads by 12 points to nil at half time well 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 thanks very much Bill thanks Barry thanks Terry Catalan Dragons leading 12 points to nil at half time. Might we see one of the great cup upsets in the second half here tonight on Sky Sports? Well, the Catalan Dragons, they know the Badly Bulldogs, they're going to fancy themselves in the second half. Just 12 points, two converted tries. With Nasty little dogs. <laughs> well, it's been Get a, out of it. Well, it was a positive change in him, wasn't it? <laughs> with John Kane. They're still looking for that weakness in the Catalan line, but you look along the, the Catalan side, there's only two players that's not played and tasted international rugby so that's the task that's in front of them but first half they were brilliant I had a bad experience with a terrier Barry that's what that's all about I'm a dog lover I'm, I don't mind I'm a dogs. bit perturbed by terriers attitude towards terrier appreciation society will be on now and Pat Richards gets us underway for the second half in West Yorkshire home of the Batley Bulldogs Mount Pleasant and it's his fairly pleasant this evening it's still it's dry it's even reasonably warm not a lot for the Catalan Dragons to complain about in fact the weather here better today than it has been in Perpignan where it's been windy and this morning was very chilly indeed and the error from the Batley Bulldogs right at the start of this second half inside their own 20 and not what they wanted well, straight away Dave Peterson ignored his coach's wishes look after the pill John Kia said well, unfortunately, he's spilled the pill. Dave Peterson brought in the side at short notice this evening. Because Callum Casey, who was to have deputised, himself failed a, a fitness test. So Peterson got the nod, the former Hull Kingston Rovers and Bradford player. But it's his error that has given the Catalan Dragons an opportunity to get points on the board early in the second half you can see Myler in the corner of the shot there just uh, calling the shots for his side there he is the former Warrington player and Myler ships the ball on for Louis Anderson and Anderson well he had players in movement but takes on the defenders another former Warrington man another cup winner with the Wolves in fact Louis Anderson and the owner of a great voice I'm told Here's Julian Bousquet, hit that ball at pace. Bosk, Myler, Myler, short ball, and Anderson, well, good defence from the Batley Bulldogs, great defence that time to stop. Well, he was beckoning in the second row into the space that was available, Richie Myler. Myler kicks crossfield on the last, the ball is claimed by Chris Alungia. And that's well dealt with from Batley. They put themselves under pressure, but they've come out of it with their try line intact. Well, he's come up with a couple of decent takes, hasn't he, Alungia, over on the left edge. You've got a couple of the forwards revving up here. Dave Scott again with a strong carry. They're still trying to break down Catalan around the rope. Try to find that space. As Alex Rowe just takes the direct route. Rowe with a cut on his chin, which has necessitated that bandage doesn't look very comfortable and Batley trying to bring the ball away up the hill still inside their own half on the last but Southernwood gets the kick away deep downfield and Gigo leisurely retrieves it on his own try line virtually good chase from the dogs it was a really good kick that wasn't it but it's what happens after the kick don't let them make yards going forward it's always hard to stop the players when they're running down the hill but when you're defending as well Bill you've got to rush up the hill but then it's easier for you to get set with the referee but you've got to come up with better defensive efforts good run from Justin Horro broke through the battley cover and now here's Pat Richards and Richards 2010 Man of Steel that's the sort of celebrity Batley have got on their pitch today those are the the kind of players these Bulldogs players are up against that's why this is such an exciting prospect for this club and they're doing themselves proud Muniz 
quick hands, Anderson onto Dupour, Dupour see you later from him, Dupour will take them all on for his second try of the game and what a try it is from the French international centre, he swatted aside the Bulldogs cover and a look of nonchalance on the face of Vincent Dupour as he gets the first points in the second half, his second of the game, his seventh of the season and Louis Anderson contributed to that try as well, great one wonderful stuff and you see the danger the quality from the Catalan Dragons is the winger Pat Richards on at this point you can just see him he's just out of shot the first time we watch this he throws his hands up in the air why aren't you passing to me and it's a right to left shift everybody in space look at Pat Richards slows down stops thinks about coming again and Vincent Duport the big centre doesn't need him and puts it down under the black dot he is back in form, only made six appearances last year because of injury problems, but he's certainly back to his best this season. And Pat Richards, well, he'd be very grateful that Vince Dupour decided to take that on himself because it's given him a conversion of opportunity bang in front of the posts. And this to put Catalan 18-0 ahead and Batley praying, paying a heavy price for you track this back to an error deep in their own half yeah, well that seems to be the the theme of the game doesn't it it's led to the points the errors that they're making but when they go at the line again they're bringing the the battley defenders over nice little soft hands from louis anderson gives that man that space but then his power his acceleration gets him the try deports try converse Converted by Richards, 18-0. Catalan must be pretty pleased with that. We can hear now from one of their assistant coaches, Michael Monaghan, who's with Angela on the sidelines. Yeah, I'm on the sideline here with Michael Monaghan. Michael, that's a great start to the second half, just what you wanted. Yeah, it is. Um, you know, I thought the first half was, was pretty good. It was professional. It's, you know, there's a reason why we didn't. Uh, we brought a strong squad. And it's because we know they're a well-coached team and they've got some really good players. So, you know, that first half showed you know, the quality they've got, but I thought we were pretty good. We, we stuck what we needed to do and kept them at zero so that's a good half for us and our second half started well downhill the second half it does make a difference it's um you know i think our kicking game struggled because of you know the uphill and unfortunately we haven't practiced you know kicking uphill and um this half i think we'll be better at that and you know, if we kick better i think we'll uh, find better field position this half thanks for your time sweet thank you here is Myler on the halfway line and just drops it off to Mason. Ball in one hand and Mason, oh, he's building up a bit of a rumble. Dupour fancies a hat-trick. He's got one man behind, between him and the try line. He's got Myler in support. And Dupour unselfishly brings the ball infield for Myler and he can pass left to right. Vince Dupour, he did that time and Myler benefited from that. He made his debut, as we said, on this ground back in 2007 as a witness player and he enjoyed that well they like this side don't with the Catalan Dragons they came straight back big Willie Mason just skirting and flirting across the line hands off Dominic Brumbani flops the ball over the top to the centre and Pat Richards he's going to fall out with Vincent Dupont any minute now because he can't get anything off him we'll watch the ball again watch the pass again I think you're right Bill I think he just wants to practice that left to right pass just to prove to everyone, see, I can do it. Batley fans complaining that, uh, well, in their view, the pass to Richie Myler was forward, but Gareth Hewitt saw nothing wrong with that. And Myler benefiting from that. He was just 17 when he made that, that debut. Now, a very experienced 25 year old. Cup winner with Warrington Wolves in 2012 and he's got uh, five tries now in his last six games as Richie Myler meanwhile Pat Richards doing what he did so well for the Wigan Warriors in his previous Super League existence kicking the goals he's scoring tries as well Richards he's got nine in Super League this season and he's missed with that one first miss of the night for Pat Richards it hasn't been the best of starts to the second half from, for the Batley Bulldogs. After all the hard work, John Keir, who's, who's down on the sidelines, John, after all the hard work in uh, the first half, you've undone all that good work so far. Yeah, we, we really have. I mean, the first set when we came up with a, an error on the tackle to 
that's just given them field position and I don't feel we've, uh, we've got the same intent in, in defence uh, this half and they've just opened us up too easily so it's a, it's a real question of our character now can we hang in there, can we keep working can we really do the process of rugby league to the best of our ability John, it was a brilliant first half by your side what do you think the energy levels are like now? to concede two tries in the opening, what, eight minutes in the second half, and you only conceded two tries the, the whole first half. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, it, it must have taken something out of other players, but uh, that, that's about playing rugby league. They've just got to be tough enough to play through that and be mentally tough and push the bodies where they've never been before. And both tries on your right side defence, John. Have you sent a message out? Yeah, well, we've changed the right side second row to try and uh, energise up there because young James Harris was pretty fatigued at uh, half-time. What a great take from Dave Scott as well. He's, he's been absolutely superb tonight under those high kicks. He's having a great game, Dave Scott, isn't he? He really is, yeah. Real pleased with the back three in general. Thanks again, John. There is uh, Sterling-born Dave Scott. That's another lad who's impressed. Lillycrop gets the pass away to Alistair Leak, and Leak keeps things moving. Huddersfield ahead by 19 points to 12, another penalty, ball steal, says Gareth Ewer. Oh, there we go now, it's gone in the favour of Batley, all comes about because of Lily Crop somewhere, he runs really hard into the tackle, offloads the ball, the ball's shifted to the left side and then there's a strip. So again, they'll get some good field position here, but it's what can they do with it? They need to just spend a bit of time down near Catalan's line. Alex Rowe back in the side after six weeks out, he had a badly dislocated thumb which kept him out of business. But this is an opportunity for the Batley Bulldogs now, Alungia. He's tackled about 20 metres out, the crowd urging their heroes on as Lillicrop drives it in. Mason gets a hold of a leg. And Lillicrop was anything like that challenge. Alex Rowe now. You see Willie Mason, he's opening players up, one foot, foot planted, the other one he's lifting up in the air, Lillicrop, he didn't like it. Kane Southernwood thought he'd spotted a gap, Boss slammed the door in his face, but quick play the ball, can they profit from this? Leak puts the kick in, but it's well claimed by Pat Richards, he does that so well, good in aerial combat. Baron Von Richards, and what's more, Wayne Retty is penalised. Well it's not bad when you've got someone the size of Pat Richards isn't it on the wing you know six foot four he's so composed when he's pressured he's been in that situation many times he knows exactly what he's got to do focus on catching the ball give my teammates a bit of a chance here here's Louis Anderson who was talking about his singing skills earlier on he's actually recording a single with uh, Albert Bueno and fans who've been to uh, Perpignan to see Catalan games will know the uh, the elderly gentleman who comes on the field and sings the Catalan anthem before the game. Well, Louis and Albert Bueno have actually recorded a version of that to issue as a single. Apparently, Louis has got a great voice. Catalan escaping there. Badly fans thinking they'd knock the ball on. <laughs> You've always got to switch on when that man's carrying the ball, Tony Gigo. Myler, no look pass from him, Dupour, this time they've got him surrounded. Well, they had three men just opposite him, didn't they? Didn't want to give him that space, inside or the outside. Myler hoists that kick, and it's a good one into no man land, but uh, Alex Brown is able to watch it bobble over the dead ball line. I suppose that's 20 metres you need when you've got to go 100 up the pitch. He wants a quick start, Alex Brown, he wants the speed to speed this game up he was the player that brought the ball back into play look at him pushing players off I want this ball he says <laughs> he's got it yes here he is and he's run at the singing second row I'm still processing that well, I'm, well I'm, believe I'm, it or not Vinnie Anderson is still playing yeah, in yeah. France he's playing for Carcassonne and will actually play in the championship semi-final against Saint Estève UTC tomorrow in Foix good luck to Vinny good luck to Louis just a little bit disappointed I didn't get the knock because I have a fantastic voice in, in Basque um, in Catalan I should say 
I'll go to Catalan. That's it, Louis is singing this song in Catalan. I'll sing what you want. You don't quite <laughs> get it, Bill. <laughs> oh, that's a good run from Alistair Leake. And it's Louis Anderson who is trying to make the tackle. Well, it could the have been a penalty. Called out. It could have been a penalty from Leake, though, trying to play the ball. Southernwood hoists that kick, it is a good one. Fuad Yaha is underneath here, but he was no. shoved by Chris Alungia. Yeah, and it was as blatant as you like. Those are the inches, those are the margins. There you go, shoulder charge, and Fuad Yaha. And you know, you don't know what's going through the minds there, Barry. Yeah, I want to belt that player before yeah, he but, gets the ball. But buy a second or two and then belt him when he gets the ball. You know you're going to give a penalty away. If you take the man and run into the man before he's caught the ball, you know it's going to be a penalty. So Catalan, able to bring the ball away, Jason Veteri. Just inside his own 40. Tom Bosk, here's Dave Taylor now. Hasn't had the impact on this game we anticipate. It's, it's coming. The second half, he's going downhill, Laurent Frazen who will be anticipating that. It's coming. The coal train, steam train, call him what you like, but he will scatter some players. And I, I said at the beginning of the game, I think he's going to let his skills flow. We've only seen glimpses of what he's got to offer. He's an incredible athlete with a full skill set. Luke Blake, good tackle, stops Vincent Dupour. Busquet, Busquet, lovely Great pass ball. away to Myler, and Myler with one man to beat cannot do so good work from Dave Scott showed up well in this game Myler couldn't get past him on the last they're running it and they will still score and Dave Taylor has got his name on the score sheet the simplest of finishes for the big man and Catalan Dragons extend their lead another try this time from Dave Taylor his first in the cup this season his sixth of the 2016 campaign and he acknowledges the good work that set him up for that try. Simple stuff from the Dragons, what wonderful offload here. We've already talked a few times during the year when we've been covering the Catalan games about the improvement of Busquet. He finds a right-handed offload to Myla. And it's simple numbers. And the big fella, he'll get his first try of the game. I think there's a few more to come. We're going to have to do a little bit more than that to stop the big fella. Wonderful stuff. You hope that the gates don't begin to open because they don't deserve this, the Bulldogs. Dave Taylor, who missed the game at Hull last week. For the first time this season, that was, uh, he hasn't made the, the Dragons lineup. But back for this one, an indication of, of how seriously Catalan were taking this. No chance that they would uh, bring in some of their fringe players for this one they will be playing in that uh, championship game tomorrow against Carcassonne the likes of uh, Sigismo, Anthony Maria, Da Costa as Richards adds the conversion in fact a couple of those guys have traveled with Lauren Fraser who's party they will fly home from Leeds Bradford tonight they won't get back home until about three o'clock tomorrow morning and then they've got to head for Foix to play in that game potentially well it's a team game isn't it they're here to support the the teammates and Lauren Fraser will be very happy with the way that they're playing in the second half it was just a, a lovely outline badly go for the short kickoff but the ball did the work to create that try Dave Trailer run a lovely outline gets on the outside of Luigi and there he goes on the short side play Taylor taking them on himself well there's five men around him you have him, you have him, no I've got him, no you have him. That's going to be draining surely for these Batley defenders. Great, good line again. Myler on the burst, he has got some support, options, one of them is Tony Gigo and another try, they're coming thick and fast for the Catalan Dragons now. And the fullback Tony Gigo, did he get that one down before the dead ball line? Oh, he's looking back. Has he overshot? Oh, look, he doesn't look confident, does he? Look at the body language. There's a smirk. It's a nervous smirk. It's a nervous it? smirk. Did Let's I? have a look. Did I? Well, I remember watching Sonny Bill Williams in the World Cup. Nah, he's yeah, got it. he's okay, isn't he? Sonny Bill Williams, while he was playing for the New Zealand Kiwis, I think against Samoa, he come up with a real clanger. Yeah, that was at Warrington, wasn't it? Yeah, cracking game.
Phew, says Tony Gigo. He did put the brakes on in time. And he puts his hands up and apologises. Sorry, lads. Sorry. Sorry about that. Just get the ball down, lad. Lovely stuff again. And you see the precision in the passing. That was the line that opened and split the defence up. Richie Myler runs onto that and simply feeds the fullback, who nearly messes it up. But look at the commitment from the line. And I have a lot of admiration for Jason Bittari. He's a very tough and compromising player. Does a lot of it. The stuff that you don't see, but uh, it was a lovely pass by the 13. Richards, another formality for him, just dinks it over. And Catalan with that 34 0 lead. And uh, Tony Gigo, who was a member of that big winning side in 2010, on the scoreboard again. What ball carriers always need, they need someone pushing up really hard. And Richard Myler's made a name for himself during his time in the Super League where he supports big forwards whether they're going to get their arm free for an offload or whether they're going to come up with a nice little twos play and then like all good fullbacks do Tony Gigo supports up the middle anticipating that break so Batley after a sterling first half effort have been unable to cope with a dragon side that has really got on the roll so far in this second half now gone out to a 34-0 lead. That's a very different prospect for and now, Batley Bulldogs. Sorry, side. Bill, it could be about pride now as well. Second, they know that the game's gone. They've not scored a try, but that's the challenge for them, to cross the try line. No side coached by John Kia will ever give in. It's also, it's about showing everybody, and we've got the rugby league view in public here, all the fans that have come and watched on the terraces tonight. It's about showing them what you can do in the fiestest. Keep it up, Brownie. You've got to keep the 10. Well, there's a, an error from the Catalan Dragons. And they haven't been faultless this evening. Casti furious with himself. No, they've not been faultless to make mistakes. The forward's starting to, to enjoy themselves. Again, it's Jason Bateri who's going at the line. He's looking for support. And it was that man that he passed the ball to, Remy Casti. But again, good field position here. <laughs> Meanwhile, latest score at the John Smith Stadium in tonight's other cup tie, Huddersfield ahead by 25 points to 16 against the Leeds Rhinos and you can see all the tries from that game on the Sky Sports website, there you go, skysports.com forward slash for rugby league, as soon as the full time whistle has sounded there, and it looks as though Huddersfield are going to add to the Rhinos woes after that treble last season. Well, they could be empty-handed this. Certainly is a very, very hard season for the Leeds Rhinos. Rambani, Southern Woods, Olungia. Taylor gets a hold of him, but he hasn't <laughs> kept hold of him. So he goes back to make sure. He's got good footwork at the line, late step. Off either foot, Olungia. There'll be a big roar here if uh, the Bulldogs can get over this Catalan line, but they won't because... Keegan Hurst has lost that ball as he was trying to get it out of the tackle. He was definitely trying to offload it. I talked about his offloads in the first half. Keegan Hurst and James Brand, the, James Brand, the starting front rowers, they're back on the pitch for the last quarter. Has the ball up near his shoulder. It's an impossible position and he can't get it the right side of the offensive line. Well, when we last spoke to John, he was he was pretty pleased with his his side's effort. But uh, John, down there on the sideline, that that really purple patch from the Catalan Dragons has has made it a very different prospect. Yeah, they, they've played really well, have the uh, Catalan Dragons. Um, they've just made one header this second half, and they've really marched us down the hill. Big fellas like Taylor, and uh, they're a pretty handful. And we're just we're not clamping the offloads, but uh, the heart's still there from the players, and they're, they're still scrambling and. Uh, Somebody down injured. I think he gets a straight boot here. Yeah. Luke Blake, I think it is the player that's on the pitch. He just catches, catches uh, the boot. I think of Pelissier. But John, what's going through your mind as you're watching your players? You know they've put a lot into this game. What's going through your mind? Yeah, it's just uh, you, you feel a little sorry for them because uh, we've, they've been out there. They've expended a lot of energy. They've, they've played some good stuff, but we've we've come apart a little in this second half. And it's a matter that they need to regroup and build for the uh, for next week when we're playing against Halifax. Build a bit of confidence both in in defence and when we get ball in hand. They're, they're up against it, obviously, John. How, how do you keep them them pumped up and focused 
for the remaining 90 minutes. Well, the rugby league players, and that's what rugby league players do. You, you love a challenge, and if you get knocked down, you keep having to, to get up and front it up and, and keep working. Thanks again, John, on the last. And Gigo, they're keeping this one flowing. But Batley have just done enough. Great defence again from Batley. Outstanding Alex Brown. I think he's been one of the best players in a in a Bulldog shirt. When we came to the ground last time, he didn't make the game. It was Sean Ains' goal on the left wing for Batley Bulldogs. He buys a bit of time. When that ball is passed, he gets out. And with all the physicality of any Super League player going around, he puts Fuad Yaha over the, over the sideline. Alex Brown in Jamaican international. He has got Super League experience from his uh, had a, well. Is this some? got the latest well, trap. What I kind of dance is that? Is that? <laughs> Catalan dance. <laughs> that could be the dance for uh, <laughs> Louis Anderson <laughs> singing. Look at uh, Remy Casti was about to burst into Bon Cop de Fals. Okay. Here come uh, the Bulldogs. With I'm, Keegan Hurst. I'm still putting my hand up, Bell. I think we could make it a, a, a three three man band there. Look there at we this. Go. Remy Casti's asking everyone to join in with him. All they needed was some of those wooden sticks and some bells, <laughs> and they could have done some Morris dancing. Donald, where's your trousers? Oh dear, oh dear. Here come the Batley Bulldogs. Can they find a way through this Catalan defence? Southernwood oh, gets the pass away, but it's back to one. Comes off a of Catalan hand. Yeah, Horro. Well, he makes a play for that. So, Batley will get the ball from this scrum. Sticks out his right arm. He knows that he could be beat on that side there if the ball goes out. And they give it to the impressive Alex Brown. On the left wing with just, what, 15 metres in front of him. And I'm sure all the neutrals who will be watching this game, Bill, will be wishing, will be wishing that Batley scored a try. Well, I think they will, Taz. I think they will. Well, they've got an opportunity here, 20 metres out. Full set of six to launch an attack on this uh, Catalan Dragons defence. James Davy wants a Wakefield. Oh, Hurst oh. again, and Taylor will be in trouble once more with the referee. They are lifting up. Is it Keegan Hurst putting him into a dangerous position? <laughs> well, you can see when he gets in, he lifts in the arms underneath Jason Bateri as well. <laughs> Remy Cust is in control of that tackle. He's the man who's got hold of the ball. The leg lift, and you see, I think it's Jason Materi actually. He's the one who does the damage. Well, I'm sure Patrick Arvan is watching this with interest. He's involved in a challenge, picked up a four match ban on the back of it. Slightly different circumstances, but it's a leg lift. Two players with hands underneath Just the groin area. Well, he's lifting the tackle and he's turning, we've got contact, we're going to put on report, it's a penalty. Jason Bettieri has been told by Gareth Fewer that that one has gone on report, so that's something for uh, Catalan to sweat about. They've got Huddersfield Giants coming up next Saturday, a game you can see on Sky Sports, of course. But more relevantly, the Batley Bulldogs from that penalty have got Catalan right back on their own try line and are looking for some points. Here is Dave Scott. Tackle just short. On the charge. James Brown. James Davy. Brambani shifts it on. Southernwood. Little delicate pass. Finds a Lunga. Lunga gets the pass away. Jason Bateri had to come in there like that. He was simmering all that set, Jason Bateri. I think you're right, says, and I don't know why. It was a, a very enthusiastic and railed up Batley Bulldogs that had possession, position. And I told you there was a try coming. Let's have a look at the tackle. 
the cause all the fuss. Keegan Hurst and his reintrodu in reintroduction with James Brown has definitely made a difference to the Bulldogs. Right to left shift, Kane Southernwood. He flops it to the centre, who's in space, who simply has to deliver an accurate pass to the hard-working winger Alex Brown, who has deserved that. He's worked hard all night. Lovely pass selection. I think Justin Horrell, if he had his time again, he wouldn't have tried to second-guess who was going to get that pass. He's possibly looking at the outside player. It's a front-door pass. Beautiful stuff and well done the Batley Bulldogs. And Alex Brown only came into the side late on because of uh, Sean Ainsco's injury. And he has shown up well for John Keir's side. Now then, Don Brambani. There's no Pat Walker in this Batley side. Oh, and Dominic Brambani has just missed with that conversion. Batley 4, Catalan Dragons 34. Alex Brown the try scorer. And John Keir. Well, that is a reward for the gallant efforts really since they found themselves conceding all those points and Batley have regrouped well they've done very well and Alex Brown Barry said that he's been one of the standout players in this game and they found the space Justin Horro making a mistake then through with Yaha he didn't know whether to come in stay out he goes in he slips over creates the the space on the edge for that man he's been very very impressive Huddersfield inching their way towards the next round. 27-16, they lead. The holders leads. And that restart is a wicked one. Oh, and he hasn't put a foot wrong tonight, Dave Scott. And that's the first error he's come up I with. And he's that, furious that was, with himself. That was a wicked kick. Because the ball's spiralling everywhere. And look at the crossbar. Yeah. He's looking at the crossbar. And the ball comes down just underneath it. I thought, I thought he, he was going to win the track. crossbar challenge for a yeah. second. Well, he loses his focus. He can't see the ball. That was a brilliant kickoff. We saw Pat Richards before kickoff practicing those, and uh, he certainly perfected that art. Very difficult to catch them. Gage where they're supposed to be. Busquet, so hard to handle. Julian Busquet, that ball seemed to come loose, but uh, certainly Keegan Hurst thought so. Oof. Tom Arbosk was stretching for that pass. Great hands, though. The experienced French international has. Muniz, oh that pass has gone behind and Batley could capitalise here well they were looking for a breakaway but there wasn't the right players with the correct speed anywhere near them then and James Davey it was with the breakout but Batley not able to capitalise the ball going backwards here's Dave Scott yeah, well Catalan turning the pressure in defence they're really getting off the line taking the yards away from Batley, as soon as they get over the advantage line, they hit with a couple of players, wrapping the ball up, giving them no real go forward. Long ball over the top, a long year now. Alex Rowe, but the pass this time doesn't come off. And uh, Rowe, I think, telling a long year that wasn't on. Yeah, that's one of those occasions where centre and winger need to be in perfect synergy and the centre is wanting his winger to cut back inside and by the time Alex Brown has made the decision it's too late and the ball bounces off his chest and he looks down at the and it was on as well Barry wasn't it correct yeah it was on because they were chasing that hard the gap the space was on the inside so if Alex Brown cuts a, a simpler line inside a lung yep I'm sure that there could have been some at least decent field position from that that movement so Catalan have the ball back. Game just gone a, a little bit untidy. And Catalan have had a, a good patch in this second half, which has put them in a comfortable position. Looking to progress once again in the Challenge Cup. Sights very much set on some silverware this season, this landmark season for them. Ten years since they came into Super League. Well, that oh, looked that good. Well, tie on Casti, but Casti is uh, a tough cookie. I think it's Keegan Hurst who comes out and puts pressure, and I thought that pass went forward. Bosk on to Louis Anderson. Anderson for Dupour. Looking for a hat trick, Vincent Dupour. Louis Anderson. Busquet and Busquet. Peterson. Gigo. And Gigo gets a second. 
in this second half and this time he makes sure he gets that ball down well inside the dead ball line and Tony Gigo who has been a prolific point scorer since he returned to the Catalan Dragons gets the plaudits of his teammates well just simple power players you can see the big go forward from Bousquet gets the one on one gets his arm free I think that's been the problem in this second half Bill the amount of times that they're going into contact, they're going into the tackle, they're riding a player, and obviously they get their arm free, and the, the outside backs are pushing up really hard. Richie Milet causing a lot of problems. Lucas Alburn and obviously Tony Gigo from the fullback position supports the big man who he knows can get his arm free and offload that ball. Dragon supporters, I'm not sure they've come all the way from Perpignan. I recognise that face. <laughs> Tony Gigo. He shouted, have it. Is that French or... The ring, ring of a Castleford accent yeah, yeah. that did actually. Pat Richards, another formality for him. Another two points for the Catalan Dragons. 40 points to four. They lead. John Keir, gamely joining us uh, from the sidelines again. Because this, is, this has been a punishing second half for the guys, John. And the big men of the Catalan Dragons are finding some room now. Yeah, they really are. They keep turning the ball inside and uh, they're testing our, our inside defence and unfortunately they're, they're coming through us and they're pushing really well for the offload through the line. So it's uh, it's pretty difficult. It's been a long second half for the fellas. Well, JK, there's less than 10 minutes left. What are you looking for in the last dying embers of this match? What will you go away from these last 10 minutes with? I'm, I'm just looking for them really to show some great character such as it has been demonstrated there with that shot by Alex Rowe. Keep working hard in defence and let's hope we can uh, nick another try. John, can you put it into context? It's Catalan up there, second place in the Super League. They're spending roughly about £1.8 million on that side that's out there. What would your players and what would your team cost? Uh, I, I think it's about 150k all the contacts we've, uh, we've got. So... Uh, yeah, I, I think they're spending a bit more than us. So you're a bit proud of your lads then? Yeah, very much so. We just need to hang in and, and close the game out and just just take some pride out, out of this last seven and a half minutes. The kick wasn't a, quite a 40-20 from the Dragons. And the players taking their time to form this scrum. Lucas Albert, there he is, 17 years of age. Well, good experience for him. Catalan wanting him to just get a taste of, uh, of a big match, a big cup tie, and that's, that's beneficial to him. They've got high hopes of him. Speaking with Michael Monaghan, pitch side before the game, and he says that he's creative, he's a big lad, he likes to go at the line. He's, uh, he made his debut last year, and, he's, uh, and when you were stood on the sideline looking at him, he's a very big, powerful uh, lad. For 17 years of age, he's through into there, and he's up against the champion side, which they're very physical. You ask any Super League player that plays against the championship opposition, it is very, very tough. Maybe not the speed that we see in Super League, but they've got tough players. Batley certainly doing better than the uh, side of 2010 did in a quarter-final when they were beaten 74-12. 40 points to four and another Batley try would raise the spirits of the crowd here at the Foxes Biscuit Stadium. To get the ball away. It's with Luke Blake. James Davy. On the last. And Bram Barney. Outside of the boot. Interesting kick. But Richards was underneath that. And here's Tony Gigo now. And Gigo. Strong. Fast. But they haven't quite nailed that full-back role, have they, Catalan? We've seen Morgan Escaray back in the side in recent weeks. We've seen Gigo come up with an error or two tonight. Yeah, well, Tony Gigo has played in every position in the, in the back line. He's a, he's a very talented player. And when, the, when he's on, he's absolutely unbelievable. And I'm sure that Lauren Fraser knows what he's got with him. He's very skillful. And they'll be looking for big things for the remaining part of the season. Here's Fuad Yaha, who started the scoring going, but he can't get through the Batley Bulldogs' cover. Dave Taylor is chasing that kick. Oh, look out! <laughs> he was screaming for that ball. He had a full head of steam up, and the Batley players, they must have been thinking, please don't give it him. 
It's a good job Luke Blake was actually in his way because if he hadn't had something to stop him, I felt for the people on the terracing behind those posts. <laughs> well, Luke Blake looked like a crisp packet. The way he was wafting about when he grabbed hold of him is a penalty. James Brown, all tangled up. Well, you have a look at this. Oh, my Lord. Greg, 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 <laughs> he sees what looks like a big barn door in front of him, Luke Blake. Alex Rowe plays the ball. Second, release. Paul Jetson. Go. Blake plays the ball. Oh, looked like a lazy pass that from Rowe. Looked like a tired pass Ke to me, Terry. Oh, Keegan Hurst, he really had to reach forward Move. for that. Move. Well, Batley sticking to their task into the last five minutes. James. Brown plays the ball. Davy, Davy, good run from him. James Davy sells the dummy. And Gigo and Tom Abos combine to stop his progress. Could there be last defiance from this Batley Bulldog side? Southernwood kicks. Ford Yaha is under pressure. It comes out of him. And I think that's going to be head and feed to the Batley Bulldogs. Oh, there was a shot of Dave Taylor. His hands are on his knees. Maybe the option, instead of kicking, run the ball. There's some of these Catalan plays, you can see them stretching, they've given it their all, they've been challenged, and that's how much Batley have really turned up today. They've challenged the Super League opposition, and they've really taken the energy away from Catalan. Fuwa Jaha, so big, two good wingers there. Right, Catalan, get the scum sorted. Clear the loose. Still pretty raw, Fuwa Jaha, 19 years of age, no Jody Broughton today for the Catalan Dragon so Yaha gets his chance well Hurst is the captain here's Wayne Retty Retty puts a kick in oh, first, bad option. first tackle or Barry was it first tackle first tackle correct myself They've got to try things now, haven't they? Look at the scoreboard. Pat Richards hasn't had a pass all night, and every time he's had hold of it, he's not wanted it. Well, they're giving him another crack here, aren't they? There we go. It's over the top of it. Well, he's six foot four, Pat Richards. He's, he wasn't the he's, best of pass, was he? He's six foot and a million. It's going to have to be high to go over the top <laughs> of him. The reason I was saying about the option of Wayne Retty is. Tony. With the scoreboard ticking down there, they've got to try something. I didn't know it was so low in the tackle count. A long year. Couple of minutes to go. There he is, on the far side. Jerome Guise in the cap for Lawrence Fraser, who beyond him. 39 tomorrow he'll be, so he's going to celebrate with a Challenge Cup win. And he was in the Dragons' first ever Challenge Cup tie 10 years ago against Thornhill not far from him but on Batley spill the ball and uh, Gigo will come up with it a scrappy end to this game and Catalan really doing most of the hard work the start of this second half they just seem to turn up the the tempo a little bit they score that rash of tries and uh, well Alex Rowe's expression sums it all up well they scored three tries in the opening 12 minutes in this second half and probably a preempted player that was where you go at the line and you look to tip it onto your teammate you're, you're not looking out the back you're seeing that the man carrying the ball at the line he had eyes for the defensive line instead of where the space was it was really that no look pass that didn't really give Alex Rowe much of a chance Gigo good performance from him in the second half and I should imagine Lauren Fraser would be pretty satisfied with this uh, this result, obviously, because they've got through to the next round of the Cup. Absolutely. And people were looking at it as a banana skin because of what uh, Oldham did to Hull KR in the last round. But uh, they've been very professional for the most part about what they've done. Well, it's a very old it's adage. It's all about getting in the hat for the next round. It doesn't matter if you put a, a good performance in but lose. It's still the same result. Catalan have done what they had to do. It doesn't look like they've picked any injuries up. 
And they're still trying, still pushing it to the last. Taylor got the pass away. Alex Brown, though, can't make any progress. He's bundled over the sideline by uh, Fuad Yahan. The two of them just uh, have a little tete a tete. Well, it was a hefty challenge from the back row. I think it was Lucas Albert who gets his shoulder in, whether it's a shoulder charge or not, I'm not too sure. But you'd have to put your body in front of the big Alex Brown, the big winger. He's had a good night. And you watch the challenge here. I don't think there was too much wrong with it. And the players shake hands after ultimately a convincing Catalan Dragons victory, 40 points to four in this Challenge Cup tie. And it really was this second half effort that has made the difference with the tries from Dupont, Myler, Taylor, Gigo, twice that took the game away, well beyond the reach of this uh, very game battley bulldog side, a battling battley bulldog side, who've done their coach John Keir proud. And uh, <coughs> thank you very much to John for his input tonight from the sidelines. An interesting insight into what a coach goes through especially in defeat and Tony Gigo one of the try scorers Fuad Yaha who got the ball rolling for the Catalan Dragons who will return home tonight straight to the airport for them back home and uh, feet up over the weekend they'll be back in action next uh, Saturday in Super League against the Huddersfield Giants Batley will be back in the championship 